from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And good morning. The time right now is 427. It is Tuesday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us here on Good Morning Indiana. Hope you had a great holiday weekend if you did have some days off there. But we want to get right to the show this morning and talk about some different topics today, including the latest number of COVID cases. And you're looking at the latest graphs, uh, the latest graph for the cases by day for the past five days. As you can see, the number of cases there has been going down the past few days or so after we had some really high days at the end of last week. We can tell you that our case total has reached more than 100,000. That's since the start of the pandemic back in March. So we're going to be taking a look at the number of cases, the trends happening here around the Hoosier state. Plus, we had four new deaths recorded yesterday, bringing the death toll to more than 3,100 here in the Hoosier state. Let's take a turn right now, though, to our forecast. Todd, uh, we talked about some chances of rain yesterday. A lot of that was to the north. And I got to tell you, I don't know if we got any rain in <laughs> Johnson County, unless you know, it happened while I was asleep, you know, but we need it, Todd. We, uh, we could use some rain. Uh, everybody in northern locations was probably not saying nice things about me yesterday because they got a lot of rainfall. But yeah, Indianapolis to the south, completely dry, and I need rain at my house too uh, here in Indy, Lauren. Uh, but we've been just missing out, and today it's really the same deal. The best rain chances are going to be in northern locations. As of right now, it's pretty quiet across the area. 60s and 70s, your temperature, you can see radar in the center of your screen. Uh, first few frames, you see the rain moving out there to the north, but we are expecting additional showers and storms to build in as we go throughout the course of the day. Only again in those northern locations. I think Indian points to the south completely dry throughout the day today with some morning clouds, but then becoming mostly sunny as the day goes on. It is a warm and a muggy day as well as high temperatures will be in the upper 80s to approaching 90 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's talk about some other things that are going to be changing today and that includes street closures. You may remember Mass Ave and Brown Ripple Avenue. Those have been closed for several months now as Indianapolis blocked off those streets to vehicular traffic so that restaurants there could expand their outdoor dining as a result of social distancing, trying to give them a little bit more uh, customer space there while well, they are reopening those streets to the vehicles today. So keep that in mind, Georgia Street is remaining closed. If restaurants do have seating in the parking spaces, however, and they still have those concrete barriers out, they can still use those spaces. So we'll be breaking down what that means for businesses in our area coming up. Plus, our own Kelsey Anderson is talking about fall fun for your family and what different orchards are doing and farms are doing around the state to keep people safe during this pandemic. We'll have more news, weather and traffic coming right up here on your Tuesday on Good Morning Indiana. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Gunfire on the downtown canal, sending one person to the hospital. Now at 430, what police say happened in the moments before the shooting. College classes are in session, but it looks anything but traditional. Working for you, we'll show you what the new normal looks like at Marion University. And a Labor Day tradition has people peddling for a purpose. We'll show you how this annual bike ride is helping those in need. It is 4.30 here on your Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining our team on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is joining me in studio this morning. Todd, great to see you. Talk to me a little bit about our forecast. As we mentioned, we didn't get a lot of rain areas to the south, and we could really use some rain. Yeah, you know, areas to the south getting very, very dry, including my lawn. But areas to the <laughs> north, there's actually some flood warnings out right now for areas uh, like Kokomo because they saw multiple rounds of showers and storms. So for those of you in northern locations, I know it wasn't the best Labor Day yesterday for everybody else. It turned into a pretty decent day. This morning, it's all quiet downtown a view to the north. The temperature sits at 70 degrees. The humidity is up there this morning with just a light breeze out of the south. And we still have quite a bit of cloud cover out there. But these storms made their way through the area or over the last three hours. This is about, oh, 3 o'clock in the morning, Peru, you're still dealing with rain. We're getting a little bit of a break now, but there's more storms off to our west. And uh, these again will start to make their way into some northern counties while the rest of central Indiana remains completely dry. But look at this, our first uh, real good snowstorm of uh, this in fall or late summer, I guess you could still call it fall season uh, out to uh, the west. We're not dealing with that though, thankfully. 69 right now in Peru, 70 in Indy, 70 also in uh, Bloomington. As we work our way throughout the morning hours, a little bit of cloud cover to 
start our day, but then it turns sunny pretty quick with temperatures warming into the 80s. And again, storms possible in uh, northern locations. We'll use two casts in a few minutes to detail these storms for you. Uh, we'll see you in just a few then. But right now, let's get you updated on the roadways. Here's Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic right now for your commute. This is I-465 and I-74 on the southeast side of town. Traffic here pretty quiet. Everything's traveling up to speed. No delays or lane restrictions to slow down your commute. So let's take you north of this spot all the way up to Fishers. Good morning to you. Here's I-69, a view from 106th Street. You can see traffic is moving along just fine, northbound and southbound. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your roads throughout your Tuesday, let you know if there are any trouble spots you need to avoid. New this morning, Metro Police are investigating a shooting downtown, sending one person to the hospital. Officers tell us that two groups of people started arguing on the canal near the Colts play space. That's when shots were fired. One man was hit in the leg. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. An officer nearby saw someone running from the scene. This morning, no arrests have been made. This is the third shooting to happen overnight on the canal in the last several months. Also new this morning, Metro Police are investigating a serious crime crash on the city's west side. That crash happening just before midnight on West 30th Street near Elmira. The firefighters say that a car and an SUV collided. The crash sent four people to the hospital. They are expected to survive. This morning, investigators are still trying to learn what led up to the crash. New this morning, state troopers are investigating a death out in Henry County. Investigators say that a driver called Henry County Sheriff's deputies after spotting a man dead in a yard on Kennard Road. When deputies arrived at the scene, they called state troopers to investigate. This morning, officials say they believe the death is an isolated incident. The man's identity has not been released. An autopsy is scheduled to determine how that man died. This morning, conservation officers say that a man has died trying to save two women in southern Indiana. The incident happened Sunday at Patoka Lake in Crawford County. Authorities say that two women had fallen off a stationary tube on the lake and they were struggling to stay afloat. That's when 33-year-old Travis St. Martin from Wisconsin and several others jumped in to save the women. St. Martin disappeared under the water. The Crawford County coroner says that drugs or alcohol were not a factor in St. Martin's death. Up in northern Indiana now, investigators say that a teen has died while on Lake Michigan. Conservation officers say a 16-year-old girl was swimming with her family near the Michigan City Lighthouse. That's when she went missing in the water. Michigan City firefighters found the girl's body about an hour later. The National Weather Service was warning of rough swimming conditions when the girl drowned. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and its ongoing impact here in the Hoosier State. State health officials confirming on Monday 596 new coronavirus cases. Since the pandemic began, more than 100,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19. Here's a look at the number of cases over the past five days. The highest number of cases reported was on Thursday with more than 1,100 new cases. On Monday, health officials also reported four new coronavirus deaths. That means since the pandemic began, more than 3,100 Hoosiers have died with the virus. While the number of new cases has been in the hundreds every day, the number of new deaths remains relatively low. In the past five days, the highest number of coronavirus deaths reported was on Friday with 17. So universities all across the country and our state have added restrictions in an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19 on their campuses. It's all part of this new normal for college students. I like walk by somebody I know and they're like, who are you? And I was like, I'm Hannah, because they can't recognize people with masks. Students at Marion University talked to WRTV about the current college experience. They're headed into the fourth week of the fall semester. Each day before arriving on campus, the students have to complete a COVID-19 self-assessment on the Campus Shield app. If they're clear, they receive a 24-hour badge to enter their classes. Students say they want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. I definitely am missing a lot more social interactions, but like I said, it's I'm trying to look at it as a positive way. You know, this is keeping me and people I care about healthy and even the people I don't know healthy. So it's worth it. I was expecting to see a lot of people without mask on. Well, that wasn't the case. I show up and everybody has mask on. Marion provided people with masks, which is another thing that was incredible because, you know, some people may not have access to certain things. Marion made sure you had it. Marion University serves about 5,000 students. Around 1,000 live on campus. The university is offering five different ways to attend class. In person, online, remote, hybrid, or high flex, which gives students the option to attend online or in person.
Two popular streets that were closed during the pandemic to vehicular traffic will allow cus to allow customers and businesses to socially distance will reopen today. Mass Ave downtown and Broad Ripple Avenue will reopen to vehicle traffic after only being open to pedestrians for months. The Department of Public Works says that businesses who are permitted to expand seating into parking spaces may continue to do so. Saudi Arabia has issued what it is calling final verdicts for eight suspects in the murder of Saudi journalist and ISU graduate Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi was murdered in October 2018 at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. Five of the eight defendants have been sentenced to 20 years in prison. Of the remaining three, one was handed a sentence of 10 years. The other two each face seven years in prison. Monday's verdicts come after the victim's family pardoned five of the suspects back in May. Friday marks 19 years since the September 11th terrorist attacks. American Legion posts all across the state have donated $50,000 for a planned expansion of downtown Indianapolis September 11th Memorial. The $450,000 planned expansion of the 9-11 Memorial will allow it to memorialize the more than 5,000 U.S. military service members who have died fighting terrorism in the past two decades. It will also add other features including an 800-pound piece of Indiana limestone from the Pentagon crash site. Right. Dozens of people are taking part in a Labor Day bike ride with a purpose. The community event is called Nancy's Ride. It started at Tabernacle Presbyterian Church on 34th Street here in Indianapolis in the heart of the Mapleton Fall Creek area. Organizers say this year's ride guided participants through neighborhoods they may usually pass by. This year we are focusing on some of the red-lined neighborhoods. So we've, we're you know, putting some social awareness to our to our rides, um, taking some people to neighborhoods that they may not go to otherwise. The all-inclusive ride raises money for free wheel and community bikes. The organization provides bicycles and mentorship to young people. The race for the White House is entering its final stretch. Just ahead this morning, how the race has turned its focus towards the military. And getting paid to log off Facebook this morning while the social media site says they're looking for people to stay away from their apps. Todd. And it's been a very active 24-hour period across northern parts of central Indiana, where many people saw inches of rain, while parts of central Indiana didn't even see a drop on Labor Day. You can still see quite a bit of storm activity out there. We'll talk about what you can expect for this Tuesday coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. It is 442. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. We're keeping a close eye on traffic as you're heading out to work this Tuesday morning. Let's take a look in Greenfield. This is I-70. Look near State Road 9 where traffic is quiet and traveling up to speed. No lane restrictions in this spot to slow down your commute. Well, with the Labor Day weekend behind us, the political season has now entered a new phase. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, both candidates for president are on the campaign trail with their eyes on battleground states. Thank you. Happy President Day. Donald Day. Trump Day. delivering an insult fueled uh, campaign stump speech from the northern steps of the White House on Labor Day. And Biden's a stupid person. You know that. Stepping up attacks on his political rival, Joe Biden, as he announced yet another big surprise on the way in the fight for a COVID-19 vaccine. So we're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special date. On the campaign trail in Pennsylvania, Biden hitting back at Trump's handling of the pandemic. He didn't have the guts to take on COVID and threw up the white flag. And commenting on whether he would take a quickly produced vaccine. Only if it was completely transparent that other experts in the country could look at it. At the small socially distanced gathering, Biden telling union supporters he, not Trump, would be better at digging the U.S. out of a slumped economy. Well, the only thing standing in the way of us getting for people to be in a position where they actually have the ability to make a decent wage is to make sure that we uh, remove the guy who's there right now. Joe Biden, the radical socialist Democrats would immediately collapse the economy. Both candidates still talking about those bombshell allegations published in the Atlantic magazine last Thursday, accusing Trump of disparaging service members wounded and killed at war. Biden taking it personal, referencing his late son, Bo, who served in Iraq. I'll tell you something, my bow wasn't a loser or a sucker. The president still blasting the Atlantic piece as a, quote, phony made-up story, and then saying this about the current military leadership. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. 
The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. And the president heads to Winston-Salem, North Carolina today, where the county GOP chair is calling on Trump to wear a mask when he arrives for his airport rally, adding, quote, there's no excuse. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. It is 444. History will happen here at the Capitol this month when the full U.S. House votes on the legalization of marijuana at the federal level. The Moore Act will likely go to a vote in the House the week of September 21st. If it passes the House and Senate, the bill would remove marijuana from the federal list of controlled substances. It would also clear the records for some people with marijuana-related convictions. A 2019 survey showed 66% of Americans favored legalization. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition trial is underway in London and new charges have been filed against him. Assange's defense team lost its bid to have the court adjourn until January. The team wanted time to consider 18 new allegations, which include recruiting a teenager to hack. The court also refused Assange's request for new charges to be dropped. Assange is wanted in the U.S. over publication of thousands of classified documents. He spent nearly seven years in Ecuador's embassy in London to avoid extradition. A busy holiday weekend is in the books for air travel. TSA officials say they screened almost a million people on Friday. That is the highest number since the pandemic began. In comparison, though, TSA officials saw double that number in 2019. TSA say that they saw less people on Saturday. Only about 500,000 people traveled that day. This morning, wildfires continue to burn thousands of acres in multiple states to our west. Sheriff's deputies in Malden, Washington, say nearly 80% of their town has been destroyed. Evacuation orders were given on Monday, but within hours, powerful winds fueled flames burning the town. One resident who battled to save his home called the fire the scariest time of his life. It is 446 here on our Tuesday back here at home. We got to get a check of our forecast for today. Todd, what can we expect? You know, more showers and storms are in the forecast for northern locations only. And that's an area that really doesn't need any more rain, uh, Lauren, as we've been dealing with very wet conditions there. The rest of central Indiana pretty dry. You look right now and it's fairly dry currently on WRTV uh, radar. Uh, but things will change again later on this afternoon. This is a 24 hour estimated rainfall map and you can see some of these yellows and greens and then you see the blues and then you see the sharp cutoff nothing really from Indianapolis uh, down to the south as far as rainfall with the exception of a few showers along I-70 there off uh, towards the east but let me put on some rainfall totals for you and look at this over the last 24 hours especially right here this is a little pocket in Tipton County that stretches over into Madison County that's seen over four inches of rain everybody else in that one to two inch range with a few isolated areas a little bit higher than that. Then you get back towards Lafayette. The rainfall totals came down a little bit. So it was a fairly wet Labor Day in northern locations, uh, southern locations. You enjoyed not only the sunshine, but temperatures uh, that climbed all the way up into the mid 80s. Currently, there's still some storms in extreme in northern Indiana, but I'll expand out for you. And we still have a warm front that is just to our north. And that's what all this rain is running along through Chicago into Michigan. And a few of these showers and storms will start to make their way uh, into central Indiana. On the flip side of this storm system, look at this, the cold air pouring into western locations and driving down some snow from uh, Wyoming down into the Denver area. But for us going forward throughout the day today, Again, north of Indianapolis, don't be shocked if you get a quick isolated passing storm. They should not be as numerous, though, as yesterday. It's more of an isolated chance here throughout the day today. The rest of central Indiana is going to be pretty dry as we work our way throughout the evening hours. And here is that isolated chance. You can see the time stamp there as we run into the 4 or 5 o'clock hour. 60s and 70s currently across the area as we work our way throughout the day today. Temperatures with partly cloudy skies this morning in the 70s, turning mostly sunny this afternoon as we'll see temperatures climb up into the mid 80s, 85 degrees by the time we get to 2 p.m. And then high temperatures today in that 87 to about 90 degree range, depending on where you are. And this evening, that spot storm chance to the north, otherwise mostly sunny skies. 
Temperatures will be in the 80s, falling into the 70s. Tomorrow we do it all over again with sunshine and highs in the upper 80s for your Wednesday. But then things will start to change as we work our way towards the end of the week as cooler, more seasonable air comes in, not only for afternoon highs, but overnight lows. The next decent chance of rain for everybody will be some scattered showers moving in here during the day on Saturday. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads. Maybe to kick off your work day here on this Tuesday. This is I-465 and East Washington Street over on the east side. Traffic is moving along just fine. No crashes to slow you down. So let's take a look on the southwest side of town. Our in-dot traffic camera here at I-465 and Man Road. Same story here. Traffic's traveling up to speed both eastbound and westbound. No delays to slow you down. We do have a heads up now for north side drivers. Citizens Energy says you can expect to see lane restrictions on Meridian Street this week. Those restrictions come as crews make improvement to the wastewater system, specifically manholes. Lane restrictions on Meridian will be from 40th to 43rd Streets. In addition to both 40th and 43rd Streets, those will be closed to through traffic between Illinois and Pennsylvania Streets. Work is expected to begin today and last approximately one week. Facebook will reportedly pay some of its users to quit using the app for a while. That's part of a study into the impact of social media on political attitudes during this upcoming election. Users could be paid up to $120. The Washington Post posted the screenshot of a survey sent to some Instagram users. It tells them if they opt in, they would deactivate their Facebook or Instagram accounts later this month. Facebook accepts, expects rather up to 400,000 people to take part in this research. The company says the study will be done by independent researchers who are not paid by Facebook. So we need quality sleep to stay healthy and function, but now doctors are using sleep to help predict when a person might get Alzheimer's disease. Researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, followed the sleep of 32 healthy adults in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. They found the people who experienced the most interrupted sleep saw a faster increase in the plaque in the brain that's an early sign of Alzheimer's disease. They say the brain cleans itself during deep sleep, and the study shows the importance of healthy sleep habits earlier in life. Not good news, Todd, for people on our shift. <laughs> well, one man is putting restrictions coming with the pandemic to good use this morning. How he lost nearly one third of his body weight. Plus, it's a busy time of year for agriculture based businesses across central Indiana. Coming up all new at five, our own Kelsey Anderson is looking at how the pandemic is forcing these businesses to change the way they operate. It's 451. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 4.55. Here's a live look at traffic at I-74 and Post Road to our southeast where traffic is moving along just fine this morning. Lanes are open and everything's pretty quiet, so that is good news. This morning, a Vermont man is using the coronavirus pandemic as motivation to get healthier. Walter Chestnut wanted to shed some of his 340 pounds to lower the chance of contracting COVID-19. So eight months ago, Chestnut would have driven 100 feet to get his mail. Well, today he walks. Chestnut says when the gym's closed, he bought an elliptical and some weights and he started doing cardio workouts every day. But he says not everything has been a breeze. There were days where I would do everything right and the scale wouldn't move. Results don't come overnight. Um, everybody wants, you know, that quick fix or the pill to, to achieve health and happiness. But it's, uh, it's a slow process of hard work and, uh, and discipline. So Walter says since losing the weight, he's now off his blood pressure medicine. And this morning he says he's never felt better in his entire life. And wow, he looks great, yeah, Todd. Yeah, he does. Good for him. I feel like either you went up or down during the pandemic. <laughs> right? And I can't say I've done the best job it, being healthy. It was one or the other. Right. But, you know, a lot of people, it was one thing you could do is get out and walk through the neighborhood or go on bike rides. So uh, good for him. Absolutely. All right. Today's a warm day for us and tomorrow's as well with highs near 90 degrees. Just a small chance of an isolated shower this afternoon. Again, in northern locations, 99% uh, of us remain dry. Then more seasonable weather will start to work its way in for the end of the week. In fact, Friday looks terrific, partly cloudy at 78 before some spotty showers start to work their way back in for the weekend. The time now is 4.57. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.